part two. So my number five, um, I don't know if I want to start it like this, but <laughs> you know, I'm a music guy. I, I like music, and I last night said what I how I compared this game to modern pop music. This game <laughs> is the feel it still <laughs> of video games. My number five is Duck Game. <laughs> Duck That's Game is a laugh and a romp and a riot, and you know what? It's just daggone fun. It's fun, it's quick, it's accessible, and the next thing you know, you're playing it again. Yeah, which is what he says, because I'm convinced he doesn't like it. <laughs> um, I, for some reason, I cannot stop thinking about playing this game. This game is so fun, and I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I, I, I think that's impressive. Not that you're bad at it, but the fact that you're still so gung-ho and you're ready to play. You're ready to go. The thing is, is here in this house, Matt loves this game. This would be Matt's number one if he made lists. But... Well, probably not. But probably... Oh, yeah, it's been a good year for the Switch. It's been a good year for the Nintendo Switch it has. <laughs> but... His number three best game of the year. <laughs> he loves... He's always about playing it. Yeah. And Calvin and Ron are kind of... Uh, we can play, you know, Vermintide. We don't have to play that game. And I... I side with Matt. I really, really like this game. Even though I'm bad at it. And this is also going to be weird to say. It's kind of like... Uh, what was the name of that game? I forgot it. Oh, no. What was the game? It's, what it's did you do? Flopping those dicks. Mount your friends. Mount your friends. It's got that thing from Mount Your Friends where every once in a while the game blows your mind yeah. because something insane will happen. Yeah. Somebody jumps into a block, turns into a chicken, bounces off the wall, and gets the kill. Nobody gets any points. Crushes somebody, yeah, with their own singed, served body. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's really good. Um, I'll talk about it later, but uh, <laughs> number one or honorable mention. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 great. It's um, it's got a really good soundtrack, and uh, I think I'm the only person that actually put any time into this. It has a pretty solid uh, series of single player uh, arcade style challenges, and I I, I really dug those because I like speedruns. He likes speedruns, he likes to use a grappling hook, he likes to sit down and have a chainsaw, you know? Yeah, I'm all about I'm all about the unconventional stuff. Calvin got the achievement for killing people by crushing them with a box. That is insane. It's like 50 kills with boxes. And the only way to kill with a box is if you it has to land on their head. Yeah. It's fun. It's the mind games, you know? It's so much more satisfying when you get them to walk into it instead of, instead of, instead of just shooting them, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like, you're all playing checkers, and I'm playing chess. <laughs> Sorry, that was very, very arrogant. It's, it's a lot of fun. I don't win by doing that. Yeah, because Matt beats all of us all the time. <laughs> but it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and it is part of the reason why this is number five. Because for as much as I think about this damn game, I am still bad at it. I'll be one of the last two left, and I will accidentally shoot the wrong direction. Or walk off the edge. For no no, walking off the edge is my number one way I kill. <laughs> I get killed. Is myself. Yeah. I kill myself. It's like, you know what I'm good at? I'm good at flying and shooting straight up. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. It's a random thing that never applies, but I can do it. And uh, I still have not, because you know, this is a game where you get hit with one bullet and you're dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So matches can go any way in case of where you spawn, or sometimes just the, you get a lucky shot. Yeah. And I still have not won a sudden death match. I I've, <laughs> I've been in three and I've lost all of them Damn. because I immediately die and then I just I. <laughs> number five, <laughs> not number one, number five, Duck Game, because I suck. All yeah. right.
Uh, my number five is also uh, I think it's I think it could be categorized as indie, but it's it's another one of those party-ish games. Uh, I'll just say it. Number five is Overcooked. Oh, okay. Overcooked right. is so good. Like, yeah, you know, it it is one of those co-op games where it's like you know it's it's like a, a pick up and play. It's not sort of like lasting. It's not like moderate lasting like Vermintide and it's not long lasting like say Destiny or Borderlands but you you pick it up and it's just the the most well oiled machine you've ever seen or everything starts on fire <laughs> you're trying to manage four people and when there's four people the biggest question is what can I do to help and the answer is uh, stopping other people's progress <laughs> Just getting in other people's way. You try to help, and you just get in other people's way. The premise is that you're four people, and you're walking around. It's, like, the simplest design for a game. You move, you pick up, and you chop, or you use, or whatever. And then you just have to work together to get these dishes out the door, and... It's like, okay, we need buns. We have five patties on the grill. We got no buns. Uh, nobody cooked this meat, or, like, chopped it up. It's somebody's just trying to throw it on a burner. It's madness. People are asking questions like, what do we need? What do we need? I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I'm going here. I'm, I got the dishes. Someone needs to bring the dishes. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's so much fun. And it's it's incredibly accessible. Like, you don't have to frequently play games or you don't have to have played this game before to be able to understand what you need to do or like the buttons. It's like, it shows a picture and you're like, oh yeah, okay, I'll just do that. X is pick up, square is chop it. Done. You're done. <laughs> Well, you gotta stick. You gotta move. Also. Yeah, you move. You move. And it's it's so it's so much fun. And it's like, Rowan, Rowan and I played this game a lot. And like, with the help of some other people, we three started all, all the all the levels. But it's wow. at least in the main game, we still have a few on the DLC to redo. But we have done every level, and we're at just at it's like the best worst problem to have in the game. You just want more. Yeah. It's you can burn through all the content in this game in like hours like a few hours and it's like but it, it has that like you know angry bird style thing where it's like you gotta get three stars and it's so easy to go back and try it again and oh you were so close you just messed up on these one or two things but it's it's so satisfying when it all comes together and every, you know the people that you're working with it clicks what people need to do and everything is flying and then on the other side, you go to the one level on the ice flows and everybody just keeps walking off the edge because you try to make it to the other side in one go with the pot, you fall into the water with the pot and all of your progress is lost. <laughs> so it's it, it was it's so much fun. And with a lot of these games, I feel like I, I sort of just picked it up on a whim. You know, I, I saw an existing PlayStation sale and I saw a comment that just said, overcooked, great co-op game. I was like, sold. I, I did not look into it at all. I was just like, oh, let's, see what, let's see what happens. And it was incredible. And so I, I really like it. And I like, I, it's it's a great game that you can like play with you know other, other people. They can show up to your house and it's like, oh, maybe they don't want to play Rock Band because they're not me. Yeah. So we'll play, now, now we have all these all these games that we can play. We, we don't necessarily have to do Fibbage. Now I can do Duck Game. Now I can do Overcooked. Now I can do other game that's down the line. <laughs> I doubt it. You tell me. <laughs> so, this year was the year of puzzle games. <laughs> At least for Ducky it was. My number four was Unravel. Nice, yeah. I remember this. Unravel, very much like you, is a puzzle game in which you have one gimmick to get through the game with. And that gimmick is you are a yarn man. <laughs> and you are throwing your yarn all over the place to try and get two more places. Yeah. That is the game. The game is just try and get through this world with only yarn powers. Sometimes you uh, unravel what? and then you're out of material to move forward. So you have to think of a more efficient way to get that far to maybe create something. Like sometimes you tie both ends of your yarn together to make... A trampoline <laughs> to get to a high point sometimes you have to make a pulley system in order to like yank something up knock up there's one big thing it's this crazy puzzle where you have to knock a boat into a rope <laughs> so that the boat then drives away and the funny thing is me and Rowan both had this game and we actually played it two screens at the same time 
they ended up going faster than I did. <laughs> oh well. Where you get to this boat and we had so much trouble and then <laughs> and then I actually did this game an additional run through to get the platinum because it's don't die on every level, which it's nice because you get twenty minute levels the, the game's probably like six to eight hours. You get these 20 minute levels without dying, but if you die and you don't know what the puzzle is and you gotta. Like, on my way back through it, it was easy. Yeah. Like, sometimes you can actually do these puzzles in a way that was not anticipated, which sounds like it breaks the game, but, you know, some of these puzzles are that hard. Yeah. Where you can think of some weird way to figure out. Because there's this one where you have to fill up like a pool of water and get a log to go to the other side so that you can get over there and I remember I had this way where I attached myself and I just kind of jimmy pulled my way up and the water just kind of kept slowly <laughs> rising and I kept scooting outwards you feel like a genius and it's great yeah that's that sounds like you know the, the best part of a puzzle game is the the satisfaction when you actually get it done isn't it yeah this whole game was satisfying. Figuring yeah. out how to do every puzzle. This is the main reason why this game is so high in comparison to Hugh. Some of the puzzles in Hugh are like tedious work. Where it's like, okay, I have to change the color. And then I have to move this three feet. Then I have to change the color again. Oh. And then move something else. Then change the color and change the... Like, nothing in Unra Unravel is like that. Uh -huh. I mean, sometimes it's like tedious in a sense that you have to, like, succeed. Yeah. I mean, mainly if you go for the Platinum, which I got the Platinum. Woo! <laughs> but at the same time, this game looks so good. It is crystal clear aesthetic. You're always outside, and it you're just this little yarn man in this big world. And it's beautiful. And I'm still amazed I didn't hear about this game until we checked out the holiday sale yeah, for no, PlayStation last is, year. This is another one that... Uh, kind of surprised everyone came out of nowhere and it's also, yeah it's, i haven't played it it's been on my radar because you and rowan both played it and said it was very good but i think that was one of the things that we said is like how does this game look as nice it is as it does for being what it is you know again i don't know how the system works but i know that like ea had something to do with it like maybe something that helped along with distribution I don't know how I would have been able to hear about this game if it wasn't for that sale. Yeah. And then we watched the trailer and we're like, that looks really good. And we played it and it was really good start yeah. to finish. That's great. It's it's nice that there's still stuff like that, you know? Like, I, I think we, we've gotten a lot of mileage this year about around just, just sort of discovering stuff. Yeah. Like, taking, taking a leap for something and it paying off. Yeah, it's been a great year for that. Mm -hmm. So I would 100% recommend Unravel. I'm pretty sure it's $20 without a sale. I'm sure they'll throw it on sales because I think the game's probably two to three years old now. So it's, oh, probably, wow. it's probably starting to hit that point where they're going to start putting it on sale. So look out for a sale for Unravel. It's a really, really good game. Nice. Yeah, I, I think I might pick it up next time I see it. I still have a lot of games in the hopper, but yeah, you know, maybe at some point I can actually start it actually start one of these games um so okay my next uh game my number four uh it's been a big year for me for playing less uh gameplay focused games a lot of a lot of story based stuff obviously i put what remains of edith finch and obviously it's not all like that because i still do steep up there and it, if you could call it a story it was pathetic and i don't like it at all <laughs> uh but i i, I think it you know, I, I wondered, you know, if it was sort of a sign of me, you know, sort of, I guess, growing up a little bit. I have to, I don't have as much time, I think, to play these sorts of games. So I, I go for the more, the, the calmer approach, right? The the less, less excitement, more take it at your own pace, sort of, you know, slow, slow burners. My number four is Firewatch. Ah... <laughs> Uh, I actually didn't intend to make that pun. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just it just happened kind of organically, but you know, I played I played Firewatch this year because I I saw it on a sale and I obviously been a little familiar with Firewatch, right? I've been interested. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering. I've always wondered what it was. And so Firewatch is they took like the 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 writers, some of the writers of Telltale, specifically with Walking Dead season one. After that, they're like, we can make our own game. We can write our own story. And so they made Firewatch. And it's 
a, it's a first person game where there are essentially there are two main actors. There are a few other characters in it, but there are two main people that actually have a lot of conversation. And the premise is that you take some time off and you pick up a job at a firewatch outpost at a national park. And you're just there to make sure that there are no fires. And you talk with one other person who's way off in the distance, you never actually see them. And you just sort of discuss what's up you know why you're out there what is it about being out there that you know is so so compelling and as a 23 year old i always How have to think you? 23 what's yeah. your age again <laughs> you know working in, in a my software job you know I, I i talked about it a little bit with stardew valley last year but it's like it does make a job like that appealing and it's obviously just because the writing is so good you just want to have that experience with somebody else where you're just chilling out you know I'm I'm not an outdoorsy person at all I hate camping I hate you know doing anything like that but it's like it makes that sort of thing appealing to me you know no electricity just kind of walking around and I imagine in reality I would be bored out of my mind and even the game you know skips the boring parts where it has jumps weeks at a time oh okay. but when when you are there you spend it talking with this other person and getting closer to this person and also like sort of there's something spooky going on at the campgrounds and i think it as a story the story really wove into how the game was set up and i really like i i, I think i could i could argue that some of the things that people don't like so much about it I think worked in its favor, you know? Some people say, ah, the game is only, you know, three to four hours long when I expect it to be, you know, this this whole longer experience. But, you know, I think after playing it and talking about what they talk about and the entire premise of the game, I think it I think it works out and in a in a much more real way than is it surface value, which I which I really, really appreciate. And so I think when you play it, I'll I'll tell you what I what I why I think that and okay. I, I I just think it was you know it was it was really well written and it it, it did have that I wanted to keep playing and it it was you know some like small details that I really liked like you can turn off mini map and you can turn off like you you have like a map and you pull out like a paper map and you look at it and you can turn off the you are here marker, which I thought was really good because you know. It, it's like I said in my waypoints video, however long ago, when you know exactly the right way to go, you don't have to pay attention to your surroundings. But when you do that, you sort of have to take a little bit of time to realize, okay, this is where I think I am. I see this. I see this. This is for sure where I am. And then later on, you do start to get that, okay, I remember this point. If I go this way and I climb up these rocks here, that's how I get back to my outpost. And I don't have to open up the you know the map again. I don't have to take, it, take some time to figure out where I am. It was a nice story with with really well written and relatable characters that I absolutely latched onto. Great game. Great. Right. I'll, I'll see it on your list next year. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Which is weird. I was feeling like we actually haven't seen that many games on my list so far this year that were from last year. Yeah, that's true. Not not that much crossover. I mean Max Payne 3. Max Payne 3, which wasn't even on the list last year. Yeah, it wasn't. That's weird. We're getting more divided. Which is probably for the best. Year by year, we're going to get so far... <laughs> at, at some point, our number ones, we're going to be like, what the fuck? That's yeah, your number you one? You fucking like that game? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You don't even play the game! <laughs> oh. But... When it does come to things that have been recommended in time, you know, I play them. And then sometimes I branch farther off. I kind of keep going with what got re recommended. So what do you think did that? Oh, I have no idea. Guaranteed. I have no idea. My number three, the game, Killer is Dead. <laughs> See what I did there? I did it. Yeah. I did it. The target is Killer is Dead, because they say that in the game. Killer is Dead. Killer is Dead is from our little good old-fashioned best friend of the show, the Suda51. Yeah, he's shown up quite a few times. Our lovely company, Grasshopper Manufacturer. Uh-huh. 
This is a game that is better than No More Heroes, but not as good as Killer7. But... Because what is? What... That's... <laughs> not wrong there. <laughs> what is better than Killer7? But... It's more... I mean, in the same way, it's like, you know... Two years ago, my number one was Killer7. Last year, my number nine was No More Heroes. This is number three. Like... It is substantially closer to Killer7 than it is to No More Heroes. So, instead of having to, you know, use Wii motion controls and have some stupid, dumb city, it is a hack and slash just like No More Heroes, except it's on a PlayStation. It's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Goodness. This game, I mean, I love this aesthetic. Now I've just... I've grown to love this aesthetic. I keep looking at game. What is game. the aesthetic? How would it's, you describe it? How would I describe it? It's um, eesh. it's weird. It's weird to describe. It's very Japanese in a way. It's over the top. It's very over the top. Like I mean, I was just saying like looks in general, but yeah. also, you know, everything is always over the top. You slice somebody, and they are a swimming pool of blood. Yeah. That's like everything. All of the bosses are always something wacky. There is a train in this game. <laughs> you fight a train where you're inside of it and it's just a face and it's fighting you. Like, this is how these games go. Your boss is a half silver man. Yeah. You, you shack up with a girl who just lost. I, I don't even remember why. But this is the thing. Like, the story is so off the wall and crazy. You're counterpart is a lady who just pulls out 16 guns and 16 <laughs> arms. <laughs> she's like, oh, better take care of them. <laughs> Killer is dead. It's, I mean, these games are so hard to describe. I yeah. mean, it's just a hack and slash, but at the same time, it's like there's all this cool stuff where the slashing and the upgrades, that's what I was going to talk about. This is No More Heroes if, in addition to being a hack and slash, you also get a gun. Yeah, that you can it. just You can stand still and you can just shoot things if you need to. Sometimes you do. Which, I mean, yeah, sometimes to get past puzzles you need to shoot things because there will be, like, spiders coming off the top of the wall <laughs> or, you know, a, a specific puzzle will open that way. Yeah, and I played a, I played a little bit of this. I think we talked about it early on in the year, and I... I I think, I, honestly, I sort of stopped after I told you that I was also playing it. Yeah, that's what was weird. Because, I, I don't know, it was like, I don't remember what else I was playing at the time, but it was like, when I settled down and gotten into the bedroom to play a game on my computer, I didn't want to play this, like, hyper-action, dashing, shooting stuff. Yeah. And so I, I, I never found, I think that was it, I just never found the time, like an appropriate time that I would want to play that. Which kind of sucked, but that's sort of what I've been running into this year, which is sort of resembling of my top 10 list as you'll see as the rest of it plays out as well indeed but in addition like the story keeps you playing and there is very similar to driver san francisco there's one moment in the game where you're in a mission and your camera suddenly becomes the person you're fighting oh my god i love and, it and i, I was like it. walking around and i'm like what the fuck's happening? And, like, these hands are still, like, shooting stuff at you. Yeah. And you're like, ah. But then I was like, wait, here it is. And then you get to watch yourself walk up and just slice it, like, a uh, million slices a minute. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I love when games throw in little stuff like that. Including little stuff like, you know, dating game? If you can call it that. Where, where you stare at woman. <laughs> Yeah, you go to a bar and you try to look at their boobs. You look, yeah, you look at them when they're not looking at you. They, they go to ask the bartender for a drink or a look off in his face and you yeah, put your glasses like, on. And then they're almost naked. <laughs> so it's like, why? I felt weird about that. Oh, I didn't feel weird about that. I was like, <laughs> I was like this is a grasshopper manufacture game. This is something that is in this game for a reason because that's what they do they do shit like that <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i'll get back into it you should because story 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 yeah I just these gotta, games are always so awesome yeah i just gotta like you know build myself up for it so yes killer is dead just the standard good old-fashioned grasshopper manufactured game that's in the middle number three excellent excellent 
Uh, my number three, uh, we talked a little bit about how we like, uh, well, maybe not like, but how we sort of appreciate our, you know, where we come from. <laughs> You're really confused as to how that's going to tie is, in. Is any, there a Stardew game. Valley 2? <laughs> <laughs> no, my number three is called A Night in the Woods. Uh, which you've likely never heard of. That wait, that's the one that came out around the time of Life is Strange. And it? it's Yeah, yeah, people have been comparing those two. Uh, I know what a in the woods is, you goof. <laughs> I like I like I like the two a lot. Obviously, uh, Life is Strange is on my list last year. Yep. And this one is probably higher on my list than that one was. Yeah, it was like seven. Yeah. So this this game is you are a college student who comes home from college to your small midwest town okay and you hang out with your friends and you see what's up and you talk with the people in the town and you see what's up and it's you know we we talked about it with max Payne, and it, but i think may the protagonist of this game is more bojack horseman uh. than than max Payne. obviously uh Neither of them are identical, but it's funny because people are also animals in this. Yeah. May is a cat. Uh, you see this character and you're like, this character is so, so reckless and dumb and stupid. And it's like, why would anybody act the way that this person does? But it, it really helps you paint a reasonable or uh, believable personality or character for this person. And your friends, you get to know more about your friends and it's like, you have one that's stuck working at a hardware store. And it's like, May is such a child. She's like, just quit. You know, why are you, you know, you're all about down with the man. Why are you working at a hardware store? And she's like, it's, it's more complicated than that. Can you not understand that? And it's like, we like our games with text choices and multiple dialogue choices. And we also like games where we don't have a choice or a good choice sometimes. Yeah. And at one point you're given two dialogue options where one was come on you always have a choice and the other one was don't you always have a choice and I'm like oh my god my mind is being blown right now <laughs> so it's got really really uh, nice sort of I don't know just with, with all of these games that I'm talking about it's just the characters are well written the struggles that they're going through are very relatable like everybody not everybody. It's it's easy to see online the the term you know millennial kind of tossed around, and you know whether you see it as a positive or a negative. I, I mean, I'm going to say I do identify as a millennial, and I have a lot of these millennial issues that I deal with. And so, this game seems like one that was made by a millennial. Like it has these these social issues that are going on in these small towns and across you know, America, but then it has, on a, on a much smaller scale, personal issues, personal struggles, and how your friends interact with you, how you interact with your friends, and how you have this idea of, you know, that things should be like this, and it's like, it's not ever like that. It's never black and white. There's always a lot more going on, and this, this game did an incredible job at doing that and I think it, it kind of it kind of was troubling because at, at the very beginning it's 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 got a slow burn and I think the end of it's kind of rushed but the things that it goes for and the aesthetic that it uh, presents itself in and all the issues that it tackles I think it does an incredible job of that and I think it's very very I, I, I hold it to a very high value for that because it, it did all this stuff incredibly respectfully and believably and relatably so like like most of the games that I have on my list, I think you would get a lot out of this. I know Rowan also really wants to play it. And it is available on PS4. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely take a look. Because uh, I think it will it has a lot to offer. It might, might surprise you. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's tough because it's like we always have these games where like, you should play this. It was so good when I did it. And then it's like, we have other games we want to play. <laughs> Yeah, and, and what you're getting to is you want me to talk about Life is Strange, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> but come on! This is the perfect platform for me to talk about Life is Strange, because I finally played it. If you want, you can. I'm not going to force you to, because I understand where you're at, and I understand... You know. Okay, well, I'll do it. Okay. Quick, quick aside, 
Um, Life is Strange isn't on this list because I thought the exact opposite about the game that Calvin did. I really liked the ending and I did not like the middle. Yeah, you thought it was incredibly I slow. I thought it was incredibly slow, uninteresting. What I say is end of episode three. That is when the game finally got somewhere where I was interested. Yeah. But that isn't everybody. <laughs> and again, I did say I liked the ending, which you did not because it's polarizing. Yeah, it is polarizing. That game isn't, isn't that isn't that the name of that? That is the name of yeah. chapter five. Nice. That game is not my number two. What my number two <laughs> is is a game that was recommended from last year because finally my number two is the Talos Principle. Yes, the Talos Principle is incredible, and it is what I wish I thought about Portal. The year of puzzle games. The year of puzzle games started with Unravel. But Talos <laughs> Principle was very short after. Like, the first three months of this year was me playing Talos Principle, Hugh, Unravel. Like, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And, um, Talos Principle is... It's so good. I'll start with gameplay. Like, gameplay, it's like, instead of Portal where you got portals, <laughs> and then in Portal 2 where they decided you have portals and now additional things that make you do extra things. I mean, more this, things to interact with your more, portals. More things to interact with your portals. This game is just, here are some items. Try and solve this puzzle by using specific items we provide for you only in front of you. Yeah. So sometimes you got the beams, which we showed last year where you have the beams. Yeah. And then there's a fan, and there's yeah. just box. Box. Everyone's favorite Good and old trusty box. There is not a single puzzle in this game that is either patronizing or not creative as hell. Yeah. Like, yeah. they make you use these things in ways you wouldn't anticipate. And then when you figure it out, it is probably the best I have ever felt in a puzzle game figuring out a puzzle. Because I managed to make it through this game, not counting stars, Dude, nobody well, counts I, the stars. I mean, I didn't do... I didn't go for extra stars. I basically went through this game just once. I didn't look up any of the main puzzles. Yeah. And I feel like one of the most accomplished people ever. Because just some of these puzzles, you're staring at it like... What? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What is... There's like one where it's like... You gotta fling your stuff somewhere else in order to open doors. And it gets so crazy. With all the stuff you have to do, and when you do it, it is it is probably one of the best feelings you can have in a video game. Yeah, I began in the last one by saying that I didn't actually get around to completing it, but I, I finally did uh, this year, because you did, you completed it, and you're like, <laughs> wow, it's really good, I'm like, yeah, I guess I should probably go back and do that, and I did, I actually had, like, not that many puzzles left, like, probably less than 15 left. Okay. So I did that, and, um, yeah, I, I, I think it was... Oh, I'm trying to think of the word. It's like something something tried to do. It was ambitious. Yeah. The story that it told alongside the gameplay was ambitious. Like you could have a puzzle game where you just you're just doing the puzzles, right? You're just you're just walking around, you solve the puzzles, and that's it. And it's like okay, that's pretty good. But to also have a story that ties into it as well as it does with you know all this all this other backstory that you're you're seeing as well with it. It really does add up to be a lot, and to be like a really, really moving thing when you're so detached from the story, and then you're, you're seeing it maybe play out, and you're understanding what's going on, and you're solving these problems, and as you understand the story, you understand the puzzles, and you solve them, and it's, it's very, very, very rewarding. So. Oh, yeah. This story is incredible. I love every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Going from start to finish, where you're literally on a computer reading dialogue about philosophy oh my god and you are still so enriched in what you're looking at the person on the other end of the computer was might be like the star of the show you know yeah i was so into that theoretical discussion that was going on because it's like you know some people might dismiss it as being a surface level philosophy or something but the fact that it's there at all. Yeah, it's in this game. Yeah. It's packaged so well with a game where you're solving puzzles. No, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, yeah. And whoever said that video games make you dumb? <laughs> I mean, you're literally reading this philosophy that's put on it. Because sometimes, 
And that's part of it. Like, name. Talos Principle. Some of the things are, like, related to, like, Greek culture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the like, entire setting. Yeah. Like, the aesthetic of the puzzles and the ruins that you're walking around. Yeah. And it is... It's an amazing story. Yeah. It's... I, it's yeah. I really thought it was a journey. Just like you, bonus points to the game because the main woman in the game has my last name. Yeah. What... What, what was that about? When, when huh? does that ever happen? When will that ever happen? <laughs> no, won't. <laughs> Crazy. It was spelled right, too. Yeah. People spell my last name wrong <laughs> my whole life, whatever it is. Oh, yeah, I wonder. Just play the game figure it out, you big idiot. <laughs> anyway, Talos Principle. Um, I don't think it's that cheap, but I honestly think it's worth it if you're going to get it for me like 25 bucks on PS4. And Steam is Steam. Yeah. So... I 150% recommend it. I actually got the the, the Defend Deluxe Edition because it was on sale for $8 last year on mm-hmm. PS4. And that actually comes with Road to Gehenna. I don't know how to pronounce that. But it is actually more gameplay. Yeah. And if you do find that, don't play it before you play Talos Principle because it is actually harder puzzles that are after the, the main story. So the story, you'll see what happens with the story. And then it makes sense what you're doing in, mm-hmm. in that game. So, yes, Talos Principle, the pinnacle of Puzzle Year. Nice. All right, my number two uh, is going to be a huge rehash of things I've said. Uh, because my number two is VA-11 Hall A, Cyberpunk Bartending Action, also known as Valhalla. So... <laughs> There's some word soup there. Yeah. The uh so okay, like what I said with Firewatch, like what I said with Stardew Valley, this game made me go, you know what? Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to just be a bartender, you know? <laughs> and in reality, it's like no, it would suck. Of course it would suck cuz odds are you will not have as deep a conversation with random bar patrons that you will with the the characters in this game. Obviously with a name like Cyberpunk Bartending Action, of course there's going to be crazy mech people, maybe a talking dog, or maybe a few talking dogs. There's some normal people, there's people with backstories that you know, backstories you don't know, and you just, you know, you you play as a girl, try and, she's bartending, and everybody's like, why are you bartending? And it's like, it's because I wanted to. It's like, she talks about, you know, you learn about her backstory and why she did what she did. But like, I mean, you know, you look at it and it's like, gameplay. What is the gameplay? You click your text, you make a drink. You can get the drink right or get the drink wrong, but you, you make the drink and you're done. You talk to people. You start the game up and it's like, chill out, grab a drink and a snack and just chill, dude. <laughs> And so it's like a 10 hour story that you play, you're in a bar, you talk to people. The people come back, you talk to them again. You make drinks for them. Sometimes you make the same drink, sometimes you don't. They talk more about what they're going through and you talk about, you, you, sort, of, you sort of give them like, you know, off the cuff bartender life advice, you know? It makes bartending look appealing, you know? Look at all that stuff. And again, it's because I was sucked into the setting. I think. The, the way that it delivered everything, the, the neat little nuances of the world, of the, the, the characters, and how there's a girl whose name is Streaming Chan, and it's like, she's got these glasses on, and the premise is that she's always live streaming, and so whenever she says something, there'll be a lot of comments that like fly in front of her face, and they're all like, oh my god, I love you, Streaming Chan, shit like that, and it's like, it's just silly, goofy stuff like that, while also, like, you know, there's a there's a robot that's, like, trying to come to terms with her identity, and then there's your boss, and your boss is always there looking out for you. You secretly have a crush on your boss, but it's like, no, <laughs> I'm just gonna go out and take a smoke break. I don't know, it was just, it was very, it was very cute, and it was very, um, it was very relaxed, and it was the, the sort of perfect game for me, it's like, you know, you come, you, you work, I work all day and I'm like, I'm a programmer. And so I'm like beating my head against the computer and it's like, where is this issue? It's really nice to come home and like when I'm, before I go to bed, just relax and just 
talk with these invisible people with their invisible stories. And I was, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you start to look forward to it every night. We're like, wow, I'd, I'd really like to see when this person comes back again or what this person has to say. So, yeah, um, I really liked it. Um, I, I kind of got worried that like my my list would be swamped with these sort of story based games, but I don't I don't really regret it because I think all of these were very different and also very important to me in different ways. So, I like where this seems to be headed. <laughs> that we had a year that was filled with one type of game. Yeah. And the best of that type of game is was number, number two. two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, but before I move on, I want to give a quick shout out. This game and Night in the Woods were both gifted to me by Rob. Hey! So Rob, uh, you worked your way up from just getting one honorable mention last year with Crypt of the Necrodancer. Now you have number two and three, so congratulations. You know me. Yeah, and Steven, you had number two for me, so good job. <laughs> honorable mentions! Honorable mentions. We have a few this year, because I kind of wanted to push it up, because like I said, I played so many really, really good games. So I, I bumped it up to four. It could have been three, but there's a lot that we want to talk about. I mean, I bumped it up to four because you said how many you wanted. <laughs> so, I don't know why I'm going to... I was going to... I should introduce this one because, of course, it has all that build up earlier when I said my number nine. Calvin got very excited because he thought I was going to talk <laughs> about a game. Yes! So I'm going to talk about yes! this game because I have to. Um, Tharsis? Tharsis! Tharsis is a strategy game. Strategy roguelike. With permadeath. I, you know, I don't know what any of these words mean, but basically we saw the trailer at that <laughs> lovely PlayStation sale. The same sale that got you Unravel and Talos Principle. And Talos Principle. We saw it and it it looked so dumb, so we bought it because it was like a dollar fifty. It's like the animations are so stiff and so like clay-like. And then all of a sudden, somebody disappears, and you roll bloody dice. <laughs> he just described the game perfectly. That's what the game is. It's just a strategy game where you try and make it. Strategy luck. Sometimes you get a little bit farther. Sometimes you eat everybody and still die. We never made it to the end, but I, I think that was because it was designed that way that you have to keep getting better and learn yeah. how to play the game and... Ironically, Matt did the best, and he didn't care. But yeah. At the same time, we Matt, also Matt is a vocal Tharsis hater. <laughs> Unbelievable! I don't know how we live with him. <laughs> yeah, we walked him through it. We ended up getting like two or three days off making it, and it was so intense. And we're like, "Oh, we got this." Yeah. But at the same time, it is just Tharsis. It's just so Tharsis. Here it is, Tharsis. Darcy's so silly, so dumb, deserving of an honorable mention spot. Uh, not on my list, though, sorry. That's fine. Uh, my number honorable, honorable mention, mention. Uh, I'll, you know, I, I said it before, is Duck Game. Duck Game's yeah, great. Duck Game's, Duck game's great. a feel it still uh, video <laughs> game. Because I, I worry that it's getting overplayed for me. And so it's, you ever have that, that moment with a song where you like it, you hear it on the radio, and you hear it again on the radio within the hour, and you're like, maybe I don't want to hear it again, so I don't want it to get overplayed and for me to not like it anymore. I've actually done that this year already. Yeah, that's Duck Game for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've been like, eh, maybe I don't want to play it. It says I don't, want to, I don't want to get burnt out of it. I still want to enjoy it in the future. And then that just means whenever I think of Duck Game, I'd be like, maybe not now. So, But it's still great. I mean, we talked about it. It's, it's wonderful, great, party fun. Couldn't, unfortunately, couldn't make the list. Too many, too many really good things. Yeah, you did have a really, really, really good one. Uh, straight down the list, my next honorable mention is Killing Floor Two. <laughs> Killing Floor Two is literally zombies from Call of Duty if it was good. Yeah. Instead of bad, which I mean, I'm saying the same thing because I mean, you know, old stuff was really good. World of War was good. Black Ops was. I still like Black Ops. Black Ops 2 is trash. But this is like, it's not exactly that because you got guys with additional abilities. You got man with knives for hands and... They, they have an end. It's it's limited waves. Yeah. It's not it's not endless, you know? It's it's like, wow, now let's see if we can do this on super hard difficulty, which we've never tried because we're not that good. Yeah. We're just, we're just normal good. Yeah, we were 
really hapless whenever we play. Oh yeah. And I Oh yeah. Every time I'm like, you know what? Dual Desert Eagles, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Was there like a tank over there? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Who you or the tank? <laughs> Both. <laughs> nice. Um yeah, Killing Floor is a lot of fun. I recommend it if it's on sale because it's just simple, yeah. fun. Thank you for giving it to us. PSN. Yeah. Free games. PP. All right. Uh, my next uh, honorable mention is uh, Dragon's Age Inquisition. Honorable mention because I played half of it like two years ago, and this year I was like, you know what? I'm gonna f- I'm gonna finish it because I was I was fairly close to finishing. I was like the last series of quests to the end and so it was i i threw it on here because it gets a lot of shit for not being as good as previous dragon ages which i would i can see i've never played them but i can see it as a lot of busy work a lot of like big open environments that had so many fetch quests and it's not it's not as good as mass effect 2 probably not even as good as mass effect 1 but i still really did enjoy the story and the the standout was the characters. Bioware does great characters, or at least they did. I don't know what's going on with them recently. But I really liked the characters. And it, it takes a while, because it's like you're trying to figure out how people sort of sit in with this political allegiance. And you know, you're, the, you're the inquisitor of this new, this new sort of government that's trying to fight back this evil. And so it's all like party... Uh, disagreements and this is where this is what somebody thinks about and this is what the other group wants and you know you're like i don't really know what's going on i just want to shoot the aliens so but you know you you do sort of feel with these with these with all these other characters that have these stories that they have to tell in addition and you know mass effect has their own loyalty quests and this has something that's like that and it's great because you really do like all the characters and what they like represent like you have like the normal guy that was like a you know just a just a a warrior that was part of a group and then you realize oh maybe he's got more to it than just that and then you have like the odd people like you have somebody that's like a benevolent spirit that just wants to help people and can really feel with how like what they're going through and what their thoughts are and he can feel pain and so he just wants everybody to be everything to be good for everybody and so when you make decisions where you're like okay i want this person in my squad or i want all these people gone it says this person approved this person disapproved kind of like in <laughs> telltale games and you're like no I, I don't want cole to disapprove of that <laughs> so i don't know um yeah just just really good glad to wrap it up uh this year because i think it is worthwhile and gets a lot of shit uh for being grindy but is well worth it if you're interested in that sort of game Okay. Next up, we have Road Rash 64. Yes! Yes! Road Rash 64 is horizontal downhill domination. It is a blast. I was originally thinking of being that guy who really liked Road Rash for the PS1 because mm-hmm. I actually got it at a garage sale this year. And you know, it's, co- it's completely <laughs> inferior to Road Rash 64. Road Rash 64 has better aesthetic, better visibility, more stuff to do. Yeah. All that crazy stuff. Remember that time we just tried to get on top of, like, a truck? <laughs> like, let's ramp off of this guardrail onto a truck. Yeah. Try and get the sledgehammer. Yeah. If, 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 even if you spend, like, how much time, it's like, maybe you get the sledgehammer and you can use it in the next race. Or like we're we're continuing through. I'm like, wow. I wonder which weapon we get this time. And you get a fucking spray can. You just blind people so they can't see. And maybe they'll drive off the road. Maybe not. But they still gotta wipe their eyes. It's it's so goofy. I love it. I talked about it, but I love it. Yeah, it's a great game. I'm glad I finally played it. Yeah. All right. Uh, my next game is uh, Dwarf Fortress. Do you know Dwarf Fortress? No, I do not. So you know how people talk about how games are hard. Yeah. Imagine if the hard part is just understanding what buttons do. <laughs> Imagine if uh, you could take Minecraft, and then instead of actually doing the stuff yourself, you get other people to do it, kind of like The Sims. Now imagine that that was made with the graphics of a calculator. <laughs> and so it's like, it's it's like, what the fuck is happening? And like, you'll see it. There's so much going on, and it's so difficult to understand what, what, what is what. But then he's like, all right, I got, 
I got mushrooms growing inside a cave. I got uh, those mushrooms are being turned into beer. I got a group of people that are shooting arrows that are training. I got people that are making arrows. And it's like, how'd you get all that stuff set up? I don't know. I looked it up. <laughs> I followed these instructions. You have to watch like an hour of a tutorial video just to get the basics. It's like, okay. So in theory, you could play it all with the keyboard, but it's like, oh my God, it's so hard. But it's like, it's, it, it's incredible what is actually being done because every single dwarf you have has a personality, has character traits, has motivations, has aspirations, has things that they want to do and things that they're good at. And so you have your group of dwarves and they're like, uh, we want a central leader, so we're going to elect a mayor. And you're, I'm like, I'm just trying to find diamonds in the ground, dude. <laughs> and so they're like, they elected this one dwarf, and she's like, I'm so happy that people have elected me to be mayor of this cave. I just hope that I'm going to be good enough for them. And I'm like, yeah, you go, girl. I don't know what you're gonna do. Uh, I'm just, I'm just making more space for, uh, for us to fill with rocks. <laughs> Because I, I got a lot of rocks. Because I dig out a lot of the ground. And I'm like, I put a handful of hours in. I still have no idea what's going on. And I see people post stories of it's like, wow, we went on this trek and we fought all these things. I have no idea how combat works. I'm like, my dwarves are probably sick of drinking beer and eating mushrooms all day. What if I try and shoot down this geese? And so I select this squad and like go after the geese. And they armor up and they stand at the front door. And I'm like, what are you doing? Get out there. And they're like, there's nothing there. Like, no, 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 you go, you go. And they're like, uh, I'm like, okay, fine. Keep practicing. Go back to the shooting range. <laughs> so it's so, it's so confusing and so frustrating, but it is satisfying. Like I could say that I at least got a, a little bit of it down to create what I have and to have at least, at least the, the beginnings of stories. And so that was at least satisfying. It's, it's, it's rough, but it's great. Sounds funny. It sounds like. I just keep picturing you actually talking to dwarves. Like, this is a real <laughs> scenario, and you're staying in a front gate, and you're like, Guys, guys, it's right there! Dude, it's... Go look, that way! Look at it! <laughs> and my final honorable mention is a game that probably everybody would say is just the best game this year. <laughs> my number honorable mention is Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> Here's the thing that I have to say about Super Mario Odyssey. Now, Every good discussion starts with here's the thing. <laughs> now, when we we made a best games of all time, I had Super Mario Galaxy on there. It's a great game. I played that game when I was 15. It has been... Wow. It's been 10 years. 10 years. Holy shit. It has been 10 years. So I started to play Super Mario Odyssey because everybody is losing their mind over Super Mario Odyssey. And here's the thing. It's really good. Like, yeah. I see it. This game, it's so great. That hat throwing, all the things you can do with a hat, all the things that you can do with the enemies that you control. All the environments are great. This game looks incredible. I've never cared about, like, aesthetic and graphics looking amazing, mm -hmm. this game looks better than every Mario game I've played. It's nice. amazing. This game looks so good. It also can't hold my attention. Oh, no. The problem is, is I just... I cannot do these kind of simplistic gathering stuff, you know, super campy, colorful aesthetic games anymore. They just don't hold my attention. So I can say... That this game is really good mm -hmm. and pr probably better than a lot of the games I've talked about. I just can't. I just can't get into it. That's a shame. But I imagine the same thing is like would be happening to me because it's like I'm not the biggest Nintendo person. Uh, obviously, with the lack of Nintendo games that have been on every one of my lists. But it's like I I, I don't think I could muster up the excitement to play a game like that because I I've moved on. I play games where I'm a bartender now. Yeah. I, I play games where I go to war and shoot people. <laughs> That's what holds my attention is challenge systems. You know what doesn't hold my attention? Let me get this moons. I do I I really liked the 2D sections. It was really I heard good. Those were really they well control done. really well and they just flow right into the game. And everything just flows so well. And after I play it for 45 minutes and say, uh, 
I don't want to play this anymore. Dang. It's weird. It's weird growing up, guys. Yeah. You know, you, you go from a stage in life where you could play a game for like eight hours, and then you're like, no, this, this just does not hold my attention. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. All right. Uh, my last honorable mention is uh, kind of my number 11. It was on the list before I forgot that I, uh, I forgot to include Overcooked. I needed that in the list. So I kicked this one out. It's The Witness. Uh, okay. Really, really good puzzle game. Uh, very simplistic. Every puzzle is the same, but it's not, you know. It does, a, it does a great job of slowly teaching you, like, the mechanics of what each little tiny, tiny detail on the panel is for, like, what it means. It has some really dumb missteps, and it also might be uh, really far up its own ass. <laughs> But I think it I think it was a really, really good puzzle game. And I I talked with somebody about this because we saw we both watched a like a dissection of the witness and what it's about. And it has some really, really interesting stuff going for it. And then at some point you're like, Alright, really? <laughs> Cause it's like the the premise is that you have all these panels, right? But then slowly as you play the game you discover more of these patterns in the environment, right? Like there's a circle and you can get it to an end, and you can only see it if you're like at a certain spot. And like the first time that happens, you're like, holy shit. And then you start realizing there's more and more of these. And so there's probably hundreds of those that I missed. And it's like, getting all of those is the real ending. And I'm like, fuck off, man. Yeah. Uh, but And like, some of the puzzles I really liked how it works. It's like, oh, you gotta see through the background and see how that comes into it. And then the other one is like, if you stand in the right spot, the sun will reflect in just a way that you can see the right path. And you just, okay, where the fuck do I stand? <laughs> So, I, it, it was really good. It managed to hold my attention for the full, I don't know, 25 to 30 hours for a puzzle game, which is kind of long. That's really long for a puzzle game. But, uh, you know, it for the longest time, it was like, is there a story? And at the end, yes, there is. Uh, and I was I was kind of shocked. or I was I was impressed with how, how, how it turned into a story or how it pans out, like the purpose of the island. But I, I, again, I don't think it was as good as um, the Talos Principle. Uh, I think it might have had cleaner aesthetic, but it didn't grab me as much. It probably had better puzzles in thick, thick air quotes because they're obviously different because they're all kind of the same, whereas Talos Principle has a little bit more upfront variety. But I think that this story and the integration of the, the Talos uh, Principle is what puts it over The Witness. But I still, I still would recommend The Witness for any... Uh, puzzle enthusiasts out there because there's a lot there's a lot in this game and a lot to enjoy so okay the, the year of puzzles is going to continue the year of puzzles you can pick that up on the ps4 <laughs> you're right i just feel like <laughs> and my last i don't know to the big <laughs> one the number one one so if you've been online and i noticed this <laughs> that probably around april the internet was losing its mind about how good this year was going to be in games. Just in general. It was like, man, all the stuff's coming out. It's insane. Yeah, a very strong beginning. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. I didn't have the time to play anything that was brand spangly new. But, I mean, <laughs> that's me. So, very often they use this game as the picture and that always disappointed me. I was like, why is everybody so excited about this game? It's going to be fine. Like, it's one of those games that I feel like you'd see at E3 and then be like, oh, that looks okay. Yeah. I'm not sure it's great. So, you know, Calvin and Rowan play it and tell me to play it. And I'm like, it's really that good? <laughs> and I was like, hey, you know what? I'm not playing anything. I just finished like getting frustrated with max Payne, so i'll i'll just play it it'll be fine uh my number one is horizon zero dawn yeah because yeah horizon zero dawn blew me away start to finish i did i really did not think i would like this game nearly as much as i did i mean i've always said that i'm not a medieval guy like i don't like or not like medieval, fantasy rpg like fantasy rpg middle ages yeah look at me using at the most modern a bow and arrow yeah as like a, magic yeah yeah like None that's elder scrolls nonsense that's never been my thing scratch vermintide because it's this whole thing entirely <laughs> yeah not but, an rpg 
I mean, it's not an RPG, but at the same time, it, it's like I'm not a fan of that kind of combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like here's a lady who's using projectile weapons that aren't guns, and I'm like, oh, is it really gonna be good? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really good. <laughs> like, I, I remember when I when I started, you guys were watching me playing. You're like, why are you playing it so stealthy? I'm like, cause she's. Machines are so scary! <laughs> you fuck up one thing with a watcher, like, the instant you start the game, and it, they make the most terrifying noises. Oh, yeah, and they, they, they screech. They screech, they scream, they run at you. There's, oh, there's so many things that just, they're so crazy powerful, and you have to have, like, a huge plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, one of the corruption zones I beat was the double, uh... Rock Crusher one? No, that was hard. That was yeah. so hard. Yeah, here's the thing. If you just walk outside, they can't go any farther. So he just looks at you and kind of spits rocks. But as long as you kind of stand behind another <laughs> rock, he can't get you and you just keep freezing him and it's like, no big deal. As he said, like, story, past story about what happened, what Zero Dawn is, blew me away. Yeah. I thought it was so good. Every, like, I mean, it's one of those games where, you know, it's a sandbox, so you can do all this extra stuff in the background, or you can do the main story. Well, I always do the background stuff and then get to the main story, because there's a really, 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 really tall robot that walks around, <laughs> and my thing is to climb the really, really, really tall thing. Before we'll anything else. Wait for Far Cry 5 for next year's list. <laughs> the story is so good, you're walking around these places... From, like, the year 2069. That's when, like, the past took place. And, like, you're in... I don't think you know what time it is. It's just... The future. It's the future in general. So it's like, the more you uncover, the more it's amazing. You're just walking through abandoned rooms where you scan all of this old technology that's people talking sending a voice memo to somebody to a loved one yeah it could just be a phone call yeah it's it's just a phone call of somebody who just wants to like talk because something is happening yeah and that that world building like every character you walk up to is like a new experience yeah. where they they they'll talk in a funny way and they'll have this like sarcastic attitude yeah and like Aloy cuts through everything <laughs> she's like i am whatever they could like she's a seeker yeah which yeah, yeah. in in the story it means like she's a part of the tribe who can just go freely and she'll like talk to people who are obviously trying to get a root rise out of her and yeah she'll just, like play down her accomplishments just like uh i got i got important things to deal with so you can you can stand around and i'll save the day she's like i'll, I'll save the day I mean, I'll, I'll put an arrow through you if you ask me. <laughs> and then it's like, like every side mission was something good. Whenever I'm playing a game through a second time and I'm not like watching a video in the background, that's a good fucking game. Yeah, you that, played that through another time? I didn't play it through another time, but, but like you went to get 100%. To, to get for 100% yeah. in trophies and stuff, like gotcha. all the side stuff. I mean, it's like I still want to know like all of this random stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, the world is amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another thing is I'll tell you about Frozen Wilds next year because I haven't played it also. <laughs> and that thing, that game is on sale through like May 8th. Yeah. They just slapped five bucks off it. They're like, nice. here, you, you can play this game. So I will see how that is. I will definitely play it because this game was amazing. Horizon Zero Dawn. Did, I don't know. Did I talk enough about this game? You can ride machines. <laughs> There's, like, so much of the game is just, let me hack this machine and watch it attack other machines. Yeah. So, like, the first time you see a Stormbird, you're like, this fucking sucks. But, y you know, as long as I just rope cast it to the ground and then hack it, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said with the weapons, I mean, they all do feel different. And, like, the rope casting is very, very satisfying. Like, you, yeah. you saw it in the trailer and they're like, Oh, uh, it's probably not gonna feel as good as it looks, but then it does. Yeah, the rope caster becomes like one of the most important items in the game. Yeah. Because it's like you if you have to fight four machines at once, your goal will be hide in grass and try and hack the, yeah. the strongest of the machines and let the strongest of the machines help you do the work. Absolutely. 
It's so good. I, I really did not think I would like this game or ever play this game, <laughs> and I ended up playing it, and it's my number one. I yeah, loved it. It's just a really, really complete package. Like, it doesn't do like Inquisition, where there's a bunch of unnecessary filler content. It's a sandbox game that, it's like, it respects your time, right? It doesn't overstay its welcome. It knows what it wants to do well, and what it can do well, and it does that. It doesn't do anything else that it is that's not important. You know? Yeah. Obviously, I really enjoyed it. It was a shame I couldn't put it higher than 10, because yeah. it seems like I didn't enjoy it that much, but I, I really did. It was. You said it yourself. You had a phenomenal year. Absolutely. And the idea is that we are splitting apart, so our number ones are getting <laughs> farther away from each other as we go. Yeah. So, please put Tharsis at number one. Well, <laughs> uh, well, I hate to disappoint. Unfortunately, Tharsis, not on my list. No! Uh, Come on! So, like I said with Steve, this, this has been a year of finding niche shit that I really, really, really dig. And, uh, you know, I was saying, I was worried that it was just going to be story and narrative ex- like experiences uh, that was just going to shape my year. Uh, but I managed to find a game that just connects with me on such a base level that you know, like what I said when I said with Steep, it was it was nice that I could still play it, you know, throughout the year. This is a game that I could play night by night by night. Do you ever come home late at night and you see me playing one game? Yes. Always the same game? Yes. My number one is Factorio. Okay. Factorio is such a well made game. That's and it's still in early access. No. Oh. I have around eighty hours in this game. Hmm. Because it's just that good. As of recently Launched my first rocket, which is the end game of like the uh, like the sort of normal mode. But of course, it's like, well, now you want to launch another rocket, or you want to start over again. So the premise is that you can create stuff. Like uh, you start off with your hands, and it's like you know, kind of like Minecraft. You know, you get a tree, you get some ore, and you make a better axe. And then you you get some ore, you get some stone, and you make a burner. And you stick, you manually mine stuff, and you stick it in the burner, and then you use that to make uh, like the next tier of things. And you're like, "Wow, wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to do this?" And so you get a miner that uses coal to dig up more coal, and then you like you get all these things so you can research like electricity, and so you get an electric miner that puts the ores onto a belt, and the belt trans- transfers all of your ore, and then you get little insert inserters to put coal and ore into your uh, furnaces and they turn into bars and it's like okay so I need uh, I need to turn one bar into a gear and then I need to use the other bar to create like a science pack and that's like the basic science pack to discover the next thing and then it's like okay so what do I need for the next science pack and it's like you need an inserter and a belt and it's like well what do I need to make a belt it's like you need one gear and one steel it's like great I have that and the other one's like you need a processing unit and one of each ore. And they're like, how do I make a processing unit? It's like, well, you take one copper and you, you turn it into copper wire and then you put that with a steel plate and then you make your processing unit. I'm like, shit. <laughs> so it's like, you could select it in your in your inventory and you'll see it create it. Like, whoosh, 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 the gear's done, the gear's done, the processing unit's done, the science bag's done. <laughs> but the entire premise is like, all right, so make it so you don't have to do that yourself. And then you're like, I'm not making enough science packs let me just add another builder. And it's like, well, I don't have enough uh, processing units, so let me make another builder. And it's like, I'm not getting enough copper wire. Let me drop some more ore deposits. And they're like, I'm out of ore. So let me walk, let me walk all the way down and I'll build a train that fills up the train cargo with ore, bring it all back, unload it, and then it'll all go into it. And so it's like, it's this constant, like, there's a slowdown here. How do I how do I break up this bottleneck? And then it exposes five more bottlenecks. You're like, okay, well, let me clear all those up. And it's like, okay, finally I can I can expand again. And you do that, and you're like, there's another bottleneck. Expanding made me run out of copper like copper wire. I need to turn more bars into copper. I don't have enough copper. And it's like <laughs> this this list of I need to do this. There's this next thing I need to do. Oh my god, this is all working. It's like remember in your first computer science class when you got your first program to run. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Constantly. It's so immensely satisfying, especially for me as an engineer, 
to see all of this come together and like you'll you'll see it and I'll probably zoom out at some point and you'll see all this stuff working and moving and these things on belts and they're going in and out and they're all combining and now I have all these bots taking them from chest to chest and it's like how all this like works together and I'm like this is a fucking nightmare <laughs> you try and look at it and you're like Okay, what is what is going on here? Okay, I guess it's turning into this. Why is this going this? Okay, I got science packs made here, 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 and they're all coming together, and they're gonna, it's like, it looks like an absolute mess, but when it's like, I made that mess. <laughs> it's so much satisfaction, and I love it. I love it so much. It's, like I said, it's a game that every night I'm like, yes, I get to work on that thing that I've been working on. I have 80 hours on this. I see no, no stopping in the future. It's so satisfying. It's so much fun. And there's multiplayer. I haven't played it with anybody else yet. I would love to. Yeah, if you're out there. But it would be so much fun. It's like, why did you set this up like that? It's like, well, it works like that. Like, why don't you just, you know, just like, you know, the, the idea of like optimization. And it's like all the fun parts of my job at work, but in a game. And it's like, What's what's the harm in taking the time to rebuild this? Well, you know, it takes however much time, but then it's like, we got it done, and it looks much better. And when you're at work, you're like, we don't have time to do that. <laughs> we have these client commitments that we have to we have to keep, so uh, you better keep moving on the next feature. And so it's like, it's the idea of what, you know, programmers want to do without the, the, the ridiculous overhead of, you know, client expectations and stuff like that. So it's just, it's very satisfying to me as a person and I don't expect you know everybody to appreciate it in the same way that I do but for me it's like it's a it's a perfect game it's got no story you're just a dude on a planet and you make a factory you fucking you run with it and it's so satisfying and I love it I love it so much and I, you know I, I remember I was like you know I started playing it after some hours I was like you know what this game might have to be my game of the year that was like weeks ago. And I'm like, it's without a doubt the the most hooked I've been with a game in a very, very long time. So, all about it. A plus. Not even out of early access. Yeah. I'm glad you finally <laughs> found your Minecraft inspiration. <laughs> it finally came back to you. It's it's back. It's different. And it's, <laughs> it's, back it's and magical. It's, and it's in a better game. Hell yeah. What a year. What a year! What a year! Great game. Uh, sorry, great year for games. Uh, great yeah. games all around. Um, there are some some stuff that couldn't make the cut. That is a shame, but you know, what are you what are you gonna do? Yeah, you make a better tank mission. <laughs> make a better maze mission. Make a better yeah. Make your maze not bad so that I can jump around and have fun <laughs> in your silly PS2 game. Or you know, don't have two tanks fight me at the same time. <laughs> It's not hard to make a good game. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we will. Uh, we'll see you in the summer for yeah. whatever our odd list is going to be. We haven't figured that one out yet. But um, I'm pretty confident. Yeah. That well, I know what we're doing. Yeah, I think I think it'll be it'll be good, and it'll be a, a nice departure from what we have done. Oh yeah. And then two years from now, we can revise our top 40s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At some point, we'll see a factorial on Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's it's been long enough a year from now, we could probably do it again. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Uh, we will see you next time, and have a happy holidays. Goodbye. Goodbye.